Hello everybody and welcome back to another Phenotype Profile. My name is Taylor and today we will be taking a break from the celebrity physiognomy analyses to take a look at the Norded Phenotype. This is one of the most distinct and recognizable phenotypes out there in my opinion due to its very prominent role in history, especially the history of Western civilization from the Greeks and the Romans up to today, especially in modern Britain and America and Germany, France, places like that. In addition to its very striking traits, especially its pigmentation. This is one of the very few types in the world with multiple hair colors, multiple eye colors, ironically for being defined by its pale depigmented skin, an extremely colorful type. And in keeping with that, it has a lot of varieties throughout Northern and Western Europe, even into Eastern Europe in some cases. And of course, it is strongly linked with the ancient Indo-Europeans who spread so far and wide that their languages are now spoken from Britain down to India and almost everywhere in between. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, as I mentioned before, the Norded type is defined to a large degree by its depigmentation. These types are found in Northern and Western Europe, which is a place with a ton of heavy cloud cover. It's also a place with a lot of very dark forest. So these people ended up losing their pigmentation that they would have otherwise needed to protect them from the sun's rays since they lived in a very dark environment. But unlike a similar Similarly, depigmented type like the Alpinids or even East Asians who just had lighter skin, the Nordids also lucked out by having a few random mutations that ended up giving them both light eyes and light hair. Light eyes can be blue or green, maybe hazel or gray, and light hair can be blonde or if there's a bit of iron in it, red as well. Nordids are also generally leptomorphic, meaning that they are long in their features. Much like their Mediterranean neighbors in the south of Europe, they are dolichocephalic, meaning that they have long and narrow skulls. They are longer proportional to their width. But unlike the Mediterraneans, they are very large headed. They tend to have pretty big skulls and craniums. They also have very strong chins and usually deep set eyes. But there's a lot of variety in these traits because Nordids tend to run a spectrum from more robust cro to more gray soft and slender Aurignacians or Indo-Europeans or Nordids proper, we can say. In their body, they also tend to be tall with long limbs and oftentimes pretty muscular. Now, as I mentioned previously, the Nordid type is most strongly concentrated traded in Northern and Western Europe, but it can be found in a number of places other than that, including in North Africa among the Kabyle people, even as far away as Afghanistan among the Kalash people. All the way east to China, you can find Uyghurs who exhibit Norded traits. Among Finnic type peoples like the Udmurts, you find very large, very robust Norded populations with very striking bright red hair. But in general, you will find the highest concentrations of Nordids and Norded types in Northern and Western Europe, especially in Germanic speaking areas, places like Scandinavia, Britain, Germany. These are the cores of Nordic Europe. Now, historically, the Nordic phenotype is associated with the Indo-Europeans, also known as the Aryans. This is the Yamnaya culture. Wherever you find these Yamnaya archeological sites, you find Nordic skulls. Long, thin, narrow, dolichocephalic, very large with robust features, long noses, and deep set eyes. But calling the Norded type the Aryan type only tells half the story because the Norded type in fact consists of two ancestral elements. The Western steppe herders on the one hand who are the Indo-Europeans, Yamna Aryan type, and the Western hunter gatherers on the other side who were the first inhabitants of Europe who came up from the West. The Western hunter-gatherers in the past were known as the Cro-Magnons based on their first skulls which were found in the Cro-Magnon caves in France. Now the Western hunter-gatherers had somewhat darker skin but blue eyes, but as they moved up into Europe into those cloudy, dark forests, they quickly lost a lot of their pigmentation and became more pale. Then they received the blonde hair gene from the Indo-Europeans when they came through and then gave the Indo-Europeans the blue eye gene as well, giving us the modern Norded look. And this is why Nordids tend to run along a spectrum of more Western hunter-gatherer looking with broader skulls, heavier brow ridges, more robust features, beefier sort of bodies, and more Aryan or Nordic proper features longer, thinner faces, more gray soft features, and lighter, skinnier bodies. But we'll get more into that later. Genetically speaking, the Norded type is connected with haplogroups R and I, 
and of course with Yamnaya DNA. You can see on this map here that Yamnaya DNA correlates pretty strongly with the Nordic range in Europe. When you get into more Mediterranean Europe, it tends to fall off pretty hard. And when you break down genetic components by country, you can see it correlates pretty strongly there as well. If you look at Britain, for example, you see that England and Wales have a much stronger early European farmer element. And those are also places in Britain where you will find a lot more swarthy, small Mediterranean types, people like Rowan Atkinson, Russell Brand, or myself. Meanwhile, in Scotland, where the highlands and the climate prevented pre-Aryan farming cultures from taking root, but were the perfect environment for Indo-European pastoralists to take up shop and start herding sheep and goats, you find a much stronger Western steppe herder component in the DNA and physically a much stronger Norded element there. You find much fewer dark swarthy Celts in Scotland and much more of that classic Celtic look with the iconic red hair, tall stature, long faces, and whatnot. Now because of its association with the Indo-Europeans who swept through Europe in the late Neolithic, invading it, pillaging it, and taking it over and installing themselves as the new aristocracy, as the kings and lords over the indigenous farming peoples, forcing them to speak their languages and making them worship the Sky Father instead of the Earth Mother and all that, you find this type very strongly represented in European elites. From kings to emperors, lords to princes, barbarians to knights. The warrior caste throughout European history is highly Norded. Even all the way down in places like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, where the Norded element was much weaker in these Indo-European speaking areas, you can still see those elements coming through in India, especially in the higher castes, the Brahmins and Kshatriyas, who themselves set up the caste system to prevent their blood from being diluted with that of the natives, and even popping up among the Mujahideen warriors of the Taliban. It seems like wherever the Nordic man is, he wants to fight whether for his own liberty or for a higher cause or simply for domination or fighting for its own sake. Now, as I mentioned before, the Nordic phenotype has a lot of internal diversity because it consists of these two racial poles going from Cro-Magnon on the one side to more Indo-European Western Step Herder on the other side. On the far Cro-Magnon end of the spectrum, you have two types that are basically unreduced Cro-Magnons, just depigmented. You have the Delophalid, which is the more continental Cro-Magnon type. It's very common in Germany as well as in parts of Norway and Sweden. This would be typified by someone like Brad Pitt, very square face, robust features, deep set eyes, but it also has an insular counterpart that you can find in Britain and especially in Ireland, which is the Brun type, which can most easily be described as the Irish type, much like the De La Felids. They are big, robust, muscular, big broad faces, heavy brow ridges, deep set eyes, but somewhat rounder features and a few unique traits that set them apart from De La Felids. Examples of Bruns would be people like John F. Kennedy, Cole Meany, Miles O'Brien from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, or Jeremy Clarkson. Also on the Cro-Magnet side, but a bit different from the original Cro-Magnet strain is the Borobi type. Now in the past, anthropologists thought that this type was the result of mixing between a Norded type and an Alpinid type, but this seems not to be the case. Instead, it looks like that this was a Cro-Magnet type that was independently Alpinized. Alpinization is an evolutionary process by which a human population develops broader, shorter skulls, shorter noses, and more infantile, almost baby-like features, generally stemming from a low-energy farming lifestyle. And we find the boar bee type associated with fishing populations in Northern Europe. So less so a warrior type and more of a peasant type, even though it's found in plenty of warriors nowadays. Personally, I think of the boar bee type as the sort of classic German type, especially the German thinker type. Classic German intellectual examples of the Borby type would be someone like Werner Herzog or Arthur Schopenhauer, both very pessimistic in their own rights. For American examples, you can look at Gerald Ford or for a lady, Marilyn Monroe. Now still mostly on the Cro-Magnet side, but with a much stronger Indo-European influence, you have the Trunder type, which is very common in Norway and anywhere that the Vikings went. This was the Viking phenotype, and as a result, it has a strong influence in Ireland, Scotland, Iceland, Sweden, Denmark. Again, wherever the Vikings went, they brought this type with them. Archetypal examples of this type might be someone like Kevin Bacon, or somebody that you guys might know, Marcus, aka the Golden One. Now, paralleling the Trunder type, also being a mix between cro magnon and Indo-European elements, we find the Anglo-Saxon type. Now, whereas in the Trunder type, it seems that the cro magnon element was more de la Felid, more squarish, the Anglo-Saxon type seems to be influenced by more of a Brun-type Cro-Magnon element, in addition to some possible influence 
influence from a more brachycephalic short skull type, maybe Borby, maybe the bell beaker type that was more Denard that took over Britain. The Anglo-Saxon type is very common around Western Europe, the Netherlands, and Britain, of course, among the English, and it's typified by people like Michael Caine, Sean Bean, or Alec Guinness. You can see how we're getting a little softer in the features and a little more gracile than Trunder. Speaking of the bell beakers, they demonstrated what is known as the Celtic Nordic phenotype. Longer faces, very high foreheads, and very long, large, prominent noses. This is shown off in people like Kevin Costner, Bob Odenkirk, Woodrow Wilson, H.P. Lovecraft, or J.R.R. Tolkien. This is, in my opinion, the most classic British type, more so even than the Anglo-Saxon type. Now we finally arrive to the furthest Indo-European end of the spectrum with what is usually regarded as the most typical Nordic phenotype, the Hallstatt type. This is typified in someone like Max von Sydow or any of the people that you see here. Very long, thin face, very gray cell features, tall, thin, very soft, almost sensitive looking. This is the classic Swedish type, but it's also found in many other places throughout Northern Europe. In addition, towards the east of Europe, we also have many other types that are much closer to that original Indo-European look. We have the Isto Nordid, also known simply as the East Nordid, which is the Slavic counterpart of the Hallstatt Nordid type. We also have the Proto Nordid type, which can be intermittently found mixed into various populations. It is similar to the Hallstatt, but much more robust in its features. And in terms of the measurements of the skull, looks pretty much exactly like the bones that we've dug up from these Indo-European grave sites, which seems to suggest that the Indo-Europeans, the ancient Aryans, looked like these guys. Further to the south, you also have the indo nordid type, which can be found scattered throughout India and especially highly concentrated in the Kalash people of Afghanistan, who up until their relatively recent forced conversion to Islam were actually Indo-European pagans. They practiced the ancient Aryan religions. Finally, in the middle of Russia, you have the non-Indo-European or Uralic speaking Udmurt people who are very well known for their red hair. They have one of the highest concentrations of red hair in the world. It's incredible. Very beautiful, incredible people. Hashtag Uralic lives matter. But of course, the Nordids have been doing a lot of conquering. They've been all over Europe for a long while. They have, of course, met other types and intermixed with them. So you have a lot of contact types. For example, you have the subalpinid type, which occurs where Nordids mix with Alpinids, especially in middle and southern Germany and along the French and German border and throughout France as a whole. This is a very common western continental type. You also have a similarly brachycephalic Nordid type in the Norid type. Norid, not to be confused with Nordid, it's named after the village of Noricum in Austria, where a lot of skulls of that type were found. This is what you get when Nordid meets Dinarid, which happens a lot in the Alps, but throughout Europe. This is a very widespread type, and it's pretty much just a blonde Dinarid. It's very common in France, Austria, Northern Italy, and throughout the Balkans and Eastern Europe as well. Now, if we go to the other end of Europe, back to Western Europe along the Atlantic coast, we have the very interesting North Atlantic type. Now, this shows an interesting stabilized mix between Mediterranean and Nordic features, looking mostly Celtic Nordic in the face shape and facial features, but having very distinct jet black hair, not dark brown, always jet black, and it's usually with bright blue eyes, which gives you that very interesting snow white Henry Cavill complexion. Not to give you whiplash or anything, but to go back to Eastern Europe, we also have the North Ponted type, which is a mix of Norded with some Eastern European Balted elements and a strong influence from the Ponted type, which is a Eastern Mediterranean element centered around the Black Sea. The North Ponted type is very typical of Eastern Slavs, Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, a lot of them are North Ponted. All right, so that concludes my overview of the Nordic phenotype. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment which phenotype I should cover next. It might just decide my next video. If you wanna learn more about this topic or get a phenotype or physiognomy assessment, message me on my website, link is in the bio. This has been Taylor from Persopa Insights reminding you to always judge a book by its cover. Thank you for watching.